everyone, you know, in the race for a cure and prevention against COVID, AI is playing a really big role in the pharmaceutical industry. Glad to have with me here today, Dan Drapo. He uh, is an AI expert and head of technology at Blue Fountain Media. Dan, thanks for uh, being with me today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's start with just AI in general in the pharmaceutical industry. It may surprise some people. Uh, of course, the applications for AI are all over the board, right? We're hearing about it. it making such an impact in, in so many different industries, but it might surprise some that uh, it's really entrenched now in pharmaceuticals. Talk about that. Yeah, um, well, there's been like kind of a growing need for it. Um, really over the past few years, I would say AI became a little bit more prominent in the pharma space, probably around 2015, 2016, when uh, precision medicine became a little bit more popular. So that's more around coming up with like individualized treatment for patients rather than, you know, typically what the industry was doing, which is producing big blockbuster type drugs. Um, so it's kind of increased uh, in popularity, but now there is more of a, a true need for it. Um, right now with clinical trials, and it's certainly true with COVID-19 as well, um, probably one in 10 or so actually make it all the way through the clinical trials process. And it costs about a minimum probably of $2 billion to go through that process. So it's a very expensive procedure. Uh, drug discovery takes a long time. So companies are turning to ulterior, or, or, or alternative ways to uh, go about um, you know, reducing that time, reducing operational costs. And AI happens to be one of the major solutions that's uh, become increasingly popular over the last few years. And, and certainly, you know, popularity, we're hearing about it right now with COVID as we're all grasping, waiting for some type of a, of a cure or vaccine. Uh, right. Talk a little bit about the, the specific AI applications and with COVID, how, how it's hopefully going to make an impact. Yeah. Um, so at least with COVID-19, um, you know, this has kind of brought together a large group of professionals from uh, digital technologists through, um, you know, people in the life sciences space, as well as medical experts. Um, everyone's kind of aligned at trying to find a, a vaccine for this. And AI has definitely played a role. Um, there's a large uh, number of companies that are getting closer. I think Moderna is probably um, the one company that's closest right now with a drug being in clinical uh, stage three. But I think one thing that's in common with all these companies is the use of um, AI. It's become kind of a necessity right now because you know we're in the middle of a global pandemic and it's it's vital for us to figure out a solution or vaccine um, therapy as soon as possible. So AI has been used in a number of different applications. Um, an interesting way is around repurposing existing drugs. Um, so these are drugs that have already been um, FDA approved. So the idea there is, you know, cutting time to market. Um, you know, otherwise, if you come up with a new drug and it has to go through multiple stages of uh, the clinical trial process, it can take a long time. So I think even with Moderna right now being in um, phase three for one of their drugs, that started in late July and it's going all the way through late October. And then if that's successful, then the process continues. So it's, it's very time consuming. Um, in terms of other applications of AI, um, well, it really is being used across pharma in so many different ways from you know, patient targeting for clinical trials to improve success to drug discovery. So, you know, I think in general, one of the, the time consuming pieces um, is really around uh, analysis of billions of different molecules um, and how those might be used, uh, right, to do um, like chemical binding to uh, the target uh, protein that we're looking at. And humans can't possibly do that, right? It could take forever. Um, and they don't necessarily have the uh, capacity or the time to look at all these different patterns. And that's kind of where AI comes in. It helps automate that process. So that's been you know, a major um, you know, significant thing here as we're uh, trying to increase the, uh, the capacity of how fast we can go about doing that. Um, I would say also predicting what drug candidates are most likely to succeed is also pretty important. I mentioned earlier that it's about you know, $2 billion or so to get a drug all the way through the process. So 
since about 90% of them don't succeed, that's a lot of wasted money. So if you have AI that can help, you know, predict what, which ones might be the most successful, that's, uh, that's a major advantage for some of these pharma companies. Um, I mentioned uh, looking at existing drugs. Um, you know, I think the whole idea of repurposing drugs is uh, pretty interesting. Um, so AI has certainly been used in that capacity. And one other interesting one, not so much related to drug discovery, but um, it, it's been be become increasingly popular for AI to be used for uh, drug adherence and figuring out what the correct dosages are. I think that's a, a major problem. It's also, you know, a large uh, amount of cost that goes into that sort of thing. So using AI in that capacity has been pretty important as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's amazing just to see, again, in, in many industries, not just pharma, how much time it can save humans, right. uh, you know, to, to do other work, to, to put their efforts towards other things when so much of that mundane work can be done uh, through AI right. uh, on the back end. And talk a little bit about, Dan, I know that you're in contact with a lot of the big pharma, uh, you know, companies. Where are they in this process? You mentioned one of them earlier, but how do they feel about it? Are we, are we getting closer, you know, with, with COVID? Um, obviously, that's the question on everybody's mind right now. Right. Um, I would say we're definitely getting closer. There have been huge strides made in the past few months. Um, specifically, as it relates to AI, only about 250 companies, surprisingly, are using AI. Um, I think there's going to be a major shift after the pandemic is done with companies really realizing that they have to use it moving forward to be successful. But you know, from all the companies, um, you know, I tend to talk with, and that's a lot of Fortune 500 companies, most are using AI, and a lot of them are currently working on cures for um, COVID-19. So it's already kind of ingrained into their process. Yeah, and that's, that's good to hear. Uh, Dan, any final thoughts here on, um, as we, as we close out here, it, it's, uh, again, fascinating, the, the capabilities of, of AI, and I don't think we've even, you know, we don't even know still what is, you know, machine learning, all of this is capable of down the road. Right. Yeah. The most exciting thing for me too, is kind of the, um, the evolution of AI with pharma. So you just mentioned machine learning and, um, you know, I think one thing to realize here in the whole process is that this is really augmenting uh, the, the capabilities of scientists who are in the field, not replacing them. So I think with machine learning, well, we've got smaller data sets. Um, it still does require, you know, a human to be involved uh, with training of a mathematical model, validating it, and so on. Um, where everything's kind of been going a little bit here, especially in the pharma spaces with uh, deep learning. So that's another uh, subtype of uh, AI that uses neural networks. So it's been increasingly important and the benefits there uh, is that it looks at mass amounts of unstructured data. So that could be cell images, um, it could be scientific literature. Um, and that actually doesn't necessarily require, um, you know, scientists or other experts to be involved. It allows, um, you know, basically with enough data, it can actually figure out what the most important features are itself by, you know, effectively self-learning. So I think that's going to be increasingly, um, you know, common here, especially when we're looking at drug discovery in particular. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, it's really a fascinating field, obviously something you're very interested in and have been immersed in uh, for quite a while. And I can certainly see how the evolution of it's what's really fascinating just to, yeah. you know, to see how it's all unfolded. Uh, Dan, thanks so much for being uh, here with us today. Obviously much more uh, for all of you out there uh, that are watching us, much more on AI uh, involvement in the pharmaceutical industry can all be found there on our website uh, at Tech Republic and ZDNet. We certainly appreciate you being with us, Dan, and all of you for watching here today.